So, welcome everyone to this introductory course on sensors and state estimation, the second part of this course. And we are going to address here several aspects that are important for um, state estimation, especially in the context of the simultaneous localization mapping problem, um, taking laser sensors into account, but also camera information. And so, why is this relevant? Most devices that actually move through the environment, such these mobile robots, drones, um, autonomous cars or other vehicles need to perceive the world and need to make decisions based on what they see. And um, this pr is a process of taking into account the perception of the system, for example through cameras or through a laser rangefinder, interpret this information and derive actions from this. So um, all of those systems, doesn't matter if it's an underground vehicle, a robot navigating through urban environments, an autonomous car or a UAV, processes sensor data, performs state estimation and then derives actions from the internal representations that such a system has. So two questions are very important if we build those mobile robots and navigate with those systems through the environment. The first question is what does the state of the world look or what does the world look like or what is the current state of the world? That means we need to interpret what we see and put them into a model of the world. And the second thing the second important question is here, what should we do with this? So which action should the system take in order to reach its goals or come closer to its goals? And these are two problems which are relevant here. This is the state estimation problem, which takes sensor information and tries to derive relevant information or a model out of it. And the second part is using this information, how can we actually select the best action to execute? And the action that the system is executing again has an impact or can have an impact on the perception, the state estimation system, so we have a closed loop set up here. What we are focusing here on the course this time is actually the state estimation part of this. So this course doesn't really look into action selection and we are looking at the question how can we actually take our observation and perform geometric state estimation. So deriving what the world looks like, its geometric properties. We're not really looking into semantic information like what I'm seeing, for example, is something that I'm seeing a person, a car, a house or something like that. We are just interested in estimating geometric properties. So the focus here in this course is on estimating geometric um, 3D structures um, and um, so that the robot can answer the question what does the world look like and where am I in that world. So there's something that we can refer to as mapping, what does the world look like, and localization, where am I, and we try to want to solve this at the same point in time. Um, a little bit about the setup of this course. This is actually a course which consists of several parts. Um, and the special setup here, given the current uh, corona situation that we have, is that this course is broken up into two parts. There's a first part, which it now takes place in the first kind of six to seven weeks, which is my responsibility um, of teaching. And then a second part, which is done by Lasse Klingbeil, um, who will take care of the second part of this course. So in this first part, when I'm teaching, we are looking into least squares estimation. So how do we compute a solution of parameters so that some error is actually being minimized? We look into graph-based SLAM as one problem that we can solve with these least squares approach, looking into pulse graphs, um, looking into general slam graphs, taking into account landmarks. We will tackle things like robust optimization, so how to deal with outliers. Um, and then we will specifically look into cameras, how can I perform geometric state estimation with cameras. Typically one image is not enough, so we need multiple images. We look into the stereo principle and then also look into the question, how can we actually arrive the motion or estimate the motion of a camera through consecutive frames which can match against each other. Um, the course here, this part will be given by myself and Nivet Chebru who takes care of the homework assignments and the tutorials. And um, so this is a slightly different setup this year uh, given the current situation that everything will be done in a remote fashion, not just only video lectures being out there, but um, also the tutorials will be done via uh, remote video conferencing. Um, homework assignments will be given out regularly through our eCampus system where you also have to submit your solutions via eCampus and um, deadlines for those assignments are put up on the course. Um, so we will have lectures using the um, YouTube, we will have tutorials and also questioning session 
probably using Zoom or some other teleconferencing system, homework assignments, and there will be an oral exam in the end. Depending how the situation looks like, it will either be done in person or also via some video conferencing system. A few words about the homework assignments because that is important uh, from the formula point of view. So you will have to solve 50% of the homework assignments minimum in order to be admitted to the exam. So uh, there will be a couple of homework assignments. They are a lot related to implementing what we actually have discussed in the course. So for example, a solution to the simultaneous localization mapping problem or aspects of robust optimization or RANSEC and maybe uh, questions on how to estimate the movement of a camera. So coding will be an essential part of the homework assignments. Coding will be done in Python and you can submit your solution actually in teams of two. So you can team up with one other student and so as a team of two you can submit your homework assignments which is done via eCampus. And again, one remark, which I repeat every year, please do not copy your solutions, limit your collaboration among each other. Um, uh, in the case of plagiarism, you will not get exam admission. You're not allowed to take the exam at all. So you lose at minimum a complete year. Um, so that simply doesn't make sense. Um, as I'm not standing in the lecture hall and you're sitting in the audience right now, um, there may be questions coming up. On the one hand side, we will have the remote questioning session so you can ask us questions via video conferencing system directly. But of course, you're also more than welcome to send um, questions to me or to Nivet directly via email. So use the communication, the electronic communication um, right now so that we can um, teach you as good as possible in the current situation. And we hope that this format allows you to do actually your studying in a complete remote fashion. Okay, thank you very much for that. That was a sh very short intro. And then we will start in the next part of the course, in the next video, with a short general introduction into the, so into the simultaneous localization mapping problem. And then start with this part of the course. Thank you.